find the coordinate direction angles, alpha, beta, and gamma, and azimuth and elevation for the force vector. This is a three-dimensional force vector with components in the x, y, and z direction. Notice that the z direction is negative. I've set up my engineering paper with the given and find information. Next I'm going to find the coordinate direction angles, alpha, beta, and gamma. We can use the equation shown here to find our angles. But first we need to find the resultant force. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we get 950 pounds. The cosine of alpha is the x component of the force divided by the magnitude. We can rearrange this equation to solve for alpha. And I get alpha is 71.1 degrees. The cosine of beta is the y component of the force divided by the magnitude. Solving for beta, we get 45.1 degrees. And last, the cosine of gamma is equal to the z component of the force divided by the magnitude. Solving for gamma, we get 129.1 degrees. We can check our answer using one of the vector visualization tools that are made available to students in the course. But first I need to find my unit vector. I find my unit vector by dividing the x, y, and z terms, or i, j, and k terms, by the magnitude. I'm using the shorthand notation instead of writing out i, j, and k. So here's the unit vector I'm going to use in the tool. Here's the dynamic figure that you have available for viewing vectors. It's a convenient tool for visualizing a vector in three-dimensional space. And we have some tools that we can adjust this vector. I'm going to change the magnitudes for the x, y, and z components to be the same as the unit vector we just found. So here's our unit vector. It's, it's acting in the same direction as our original force. And I can turn on the angles and view those angles for alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha is measured from the x-axis. So if I look down the z-axis, I can see it. And 71.1 degrees is what we got. Beta is measured from the y-axis. We can see that here, 45, about 45.2 degrees. And gamma is measured from the z-axis. And we can see that here, 129 degrees. So it looks like we're right. The problem also asks us to find the azimuth and elevation angles. The azimuth and elevation angles are an alternative way to show the direction of this vector. And we'll use two angles, theta and phi. Let's review quickly what azimuth and elevation angles are. Here they're shown in a figure. The azimuth is the angle in the horizontal plane, measured here as theta, relative to one of the horizontal axes. And the azimuth is measuring from the, here it's the x-axis, to the component of the force vector reflected down on the horizontal plane. The elevation is the angle relative to the horizontal plane, it's phi. I'm going to use the same notation. I'm going to define theta from the x-axis and phi from the xy plane. Since I'm using the angle configuration that's shown in this figure, I can use the equation shown to find my theta and phi angles. Remember the note that the formulas that are shown here are only valid for the angle configuration shown. If you're measuring theta from the y-axis or phi from the z-axis, 
then these equations are no good. Here's one of our relationships. I know the force component in the z direction, and I know my magnitude f. I can rewrite it to solve for phi. Solving for phi, I get negative 39.1 degrees. Negative, does that make sense? Well, let's go back up and look at our original vector. We see that the k or z component is in the negative direction. So this negative 39 degrees means that our elevation is below the horizontal plane. And, and so, yeah, that, that does make sense. Here's another relationship from the slide we just looked at. It says the force component in the x direction is equal to the magnitude times the cosine of phi times the cosine of theta. We can use this equation to solve for theta, since we know all the other variables. Solving for theta, I get 65.3 degrees. Now there was one more equation on that slide, an equation for finding the y component. We could use it to check our answer. Let's do it. Here is our last equation for solving for the y component. Plugging in values for phi and theta, I get 669.9. If we look at our y component, it's given as 670, which is the same answer to three significant digits. So that's encouraging. That means my answers are probably right. And we're done.